Hey, what's going on? Yeah, it's your boy Three Stacks in this thing representing Team King of Games. Today, I'm going to go over my tournament report for the regionals that I just attended, which was Shriverport in Louisiana. I got 38th place, and um, it was a lot of rogue, believe it or not. I was really happy to see it, too. It was, like, not really that many meta decks. Like, there's a lot of diversity, and I was happy. Um, and I'm going to give you, basically, my, my tournament report and my record. You already know what place I got, but I'm going to explain the record and all that once I finish the deck profile. But understand that side deck, main deck, and extra deck are completely different from the deck profile I just showcased literally two or three days ago. Without further ado, we're going to hop right into the main deck. We're going to drop out the monsters, and then I'm going to kind of explain it as I go, but I promise I won't take so much of your time. So starting off with the monsters, two masterpiece. I've explained how I've been able to break boards by just with this card by itself. Every time I summon him, um, there's three different times at the uh, the event where I just broke a board just by summoning him. Um, and then he was able to pick things apart at that point and made it so fragile that I was just like, masterpiece for game. Um, he just doesn't care about practically anything. He's just one of those cards that just completely ignores so much. It's just, dude, like there's no monsters that can really compete with him. Um, there is like a lot of things where, you know, people were trying to attack over him and I was just like focusing heavily on Apocalypse and also invoked Raijin to Book of Moon things to just make sure Masterpiece can't be dealt with. Um, ultimately it was protect the castle with him a lot. And then sometimes it was just like hand trap invoke strikes. Like it was just really good, but Masterpiece got outed one time by Blue Eyes player, which I don't even want to tell that story cause I'm mad. And then one copy of Mariamne. Um, this is for your diagram shenanigans and also to make true king of all chlamydia, which is really, really important to have at least one copy of her in your deck. She's really savage. Uh, there was a time when I had double droll and I bricked and I'm like, I'm just going to summon her and destroy both my trolls just to attack for 27 because we're in turns and I just need some damage. Um, she was just so relevant, man. Uh, I, I, I would never regret playing her. And then continuing three copies of Mr. Crowley. Probably the most powerful card in my deck, like no lie. Masterpiece is strong and he's so hard to deal with, but when I say power, I mean, I'm just going to say in terms of card economy, like how much advantage I slowly accumulated, like gradual accumulation was insane with this card. I, I lived off of one Alistair for like seven turns until I got into a Masterpiece play, like he would, and it was just one. The other two are still in my deck, like he's just, ooh, 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 so on fleek. It is just, I love this card. Uh, he alone is just like sometimes he's your deck like you're not doing anything else except for like him hand traps just regular traps strikes evenly matched let's get it uh, i think these two are italian this one's german oh shout outs to marco also because he gave me foreign like everything my masterpieces are foreign now they're uh german i got italian and german diagrams uh german return and heritage i'm happy because I'm a rarity hold. Like everything's like max rarity, and slowly but surely everything's gonna be foreign. The ulti German blue boy, because if you don't play ulti German, you'll never draw it. Believe it or not, I drew this card five times out of nine rounds, which is so crazy. Like blue boy loves me. I was like, you know what? I think I'm making sense when I say if you don't play the ulti, you won't draw it. Uh, three copies of Ash. Ash and Gamma was so relevant. Um, it was to that point where if you let Gamma resolve, you lose. Um, a lot of the times, not every time, because sometimes you just open the nuts and they try to stop you and they can't stop everything. But Ash and Gamma is so important. Like, unless they're using Gamma to summon from hand, it's just like you're, you're, you're going to get them. Because, like, the first Gamma is normally the only Gamma that gets resolved. And Ash is so important to cut that play short, especially for my deck. Because, like, once somebody Gammas me, it's like so downhill at that point. Um, it's just really important to keep in mind that when you draw an Ash, save that Ash for the best play you can possibly shut down. It's really important. Like, that's what I was doing with my hand traps. I was holding them, like, as long as I could. I didn't let anybody bait me out, and I just, like, every time I dropped them, it was just like, oh, I just got game off of this Ash. Uh, three Ochre. I outed Time Pendulum Graph, Star Pendulum Graph, uh, Wisdom Eye. There's a lot of Pendulum Magicians. I played four Pendulum Magicians. Um, I outed this Ultra Guys Boss Monster. It helped to cut off Link Combos. Uh, it is just so relevant. She just deals with problems that I don't want to uh, whatsoever. Like, Ogring Threats was just so freaking relevant at the event. Uh, I, I can name, like, eight different things that I Ogred that just, like, was a bombshell play. It's, she's just so good, man. Like, no lie. I, I really do like Ogre a lot. That's why I play her at three. Um, and then continue with basically the hand traps. You know, it's like I played 12 or 13. I'm sorry. Three copies of Gamma. Everything that's not Alistair and Blue Boy is pretty much susceptible to Ash, Ogre, and Troll. 
um, especially diagram. Like diagram and gamma is the biggest bait because like a lot of people, if they have an out to diagram, they don't let it go through. Some people, when they know what I'm playing, don't even let terraforming they go through because they know it can lead to like so many different things. So when you open up a terraforming diagram, you know, sometimes meltdown, somebody asked my meltdown. I guess he thought I already had invocation in hand. And at that point, I just needed an Alistair. So in his mind, I understand he's like, if I don't ash meltdown and I ash Alistair and he has invocation, I've wasted my ass. So he ashed meltdown. I'm like, gamma for game. Like, dude, it's it just, Gamma was so crazy. I'm going to stop explaining this card because I feel like I'm going to go on and on about him because he's just so, he's so insane. Every time I resolve Gamma, I either won the door or I got somebody to the point where they're about to scoop. Uh, three drolls, it's just like a loser turn. Um, two different times I acknowledged him. Um, I just spellbook acknowledged him. I was under mistake playing Paleos in a really awkward grind game where he had no, tr like, Paleos traps, just like mistakes and a dupe and he couldn't add off a dupe. So it was like stalemate. And then I like normal summon droll knowledge. He's like, you can't. I'm like, mistake says I can't add, but I can draw. And he's like, oh, snap. I drew into masterpiece return. I'm like, all right, dude. Like, all I need to do is just wait one turn. And like, I, I've got it, dude. It was just insane. Uh, droll's pretty clutch, you know. He was more clutch when I acknowledged him than he was when I played him as a hand trap. But it's nice to have him. You know, Droll's just like, you need him for the spiral matchup and for the trick star matchup and for the magician matchup so that you can just turn their turn off. Um, just cut their play short so that you can kill them next turn. Like, if you put them behind, now they're playing catch up. In addition to them playing catch up, they have to play around all my disruption. My deck has so many forms of disruption and ways to control the duel that it's just not to be taken lightly. Uh, the Maxi and the Driver as, you know, the one of hand traps. Well, he's not even a hand trap, but Maxi. <laughs> I wish I would have drawn this card when I needed him. I think I drew him as my sixth card, like, twice. And I was like, where were you when I needed you? Uh, like, why? Why now? I was not happy, <laughs> but Maxi has to be played. Uh, there's even a time like when I was doing some side frame shenanigans, like I Epsilon uh, made Omega, cleared a card, then Gamma made the second Omega, but he Maxied on the first Epsilon and um, he drew off of that. And then after that, when I, um, after he drew off of that, I activated Droll and Lockbird from hand, turned his Maxi off and just killed him. And I felt like if I wasn't able to do that, I wouldn't even have played the risk. I would have just kind of like stopped at that point because I wasn't sure if I was going to kill him. But when I turn off the maxi, I'm like, I've committed so much. I have to go for the game. Like I have to go for the push or I might lose next turn. Uh, three diagram, two Italian and one German, if I'm not mistaken. I'm happy about it, dude. Just just let me be happy, man. Uh, one magical meltdown. Uh, you can play two just to see Alistair more. But I just really didn't want to play... Um, so much of the same card i wanted to have you know open slots for my going first and my going second cards uh three optimus prime for the shenanigans some of the best gamma bait ever uh, honestly just ash bait and droll bait as well it's the best droll bait everybody drolls after terraforming it's it's smart to do like it honestly is it's like if you let the field spell resolve for certain decks like your droll is now like it's no point to droll you feel me like there's a proper time to do it two secrets you got to play ulti germans and you have to play ultimate terraformers or you'll never draw them and then also to knowledge knowledge was amazing even times when i drew it and i didn't have alistair like i said with the draw uh the german heritage that i'm happy about uh disciples just play one and one these three spells to me are garnets so like there are a lot of times when i draw them and like it's the right time because i have the cards that are required for their situational you know requirements basically you know like you have the cards that are needed for them to resolve their effects um, but outside of that they're like garnets in hand if that makes sense so i really don't like drawing these by themselves that's why i only play one of each um, invocation can never get cyclone because I play Omegas. I can always put it back and then shuffle it. And then Raigeki, dude. Oh my God, this card loves me. Like you, you gotta play the ulti Raigeki, fam. I'm telling you, you have to. That sums up the spells. Relatively, um, when it comes down to the main deck, I never really change the spells, but I'm always changing the monster and the trap lineup. Three evenly matched. This is either gonna bait out scolding or I'm just gonna clear everything you have and leave you with one. Sleeper is so easy to deal with whenever I have Alistair, which I play three of, so it's not even a problem. Uh, evenly matched Trick Stars, like, it's not always going to happen, like, but if you have Ash for the Reincarnation or Epsilon for the Reincarnation, um, when, you, when you do Epsilon, you have to do Omega in your main phase and, you know, have no more monsters and no more cards so that you can evenly match again, but there are a lot of ways you can basically stop Reincarnation from going off in the Trick Star matchup, which I did, and then I evenly matched, and then they just, like, it was so downhill, like, this card was just a blowout. Like, I never really drew it when it was bad. Like, even when I drew it and I was, like, having cards on the field, I would just set it 
And when I got into that situation, it was like, oh, I'm about to die. Like, if I don't get killed in battle phase, I'm, like, evenly matched and just, like, set the tie back in my favor. And then I play the full Solomon Brigade now. Um, believe it or not, there's so many cards that you can warn it. It's just crazy. Um, Sleeper includes in a text that in his effect that special summons. Uh, Firewall Dragon includes a text in his, uh, um, includes an effect in his text that special summons. There's a lot of cards you can warn him. Warning Reincarnation, like, I can name so many competitive cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now that you can warn it. You wouldn't even believe how... I was using warning like a strike to negate. I wasn't even really using it on summons because there are so many cards people were playing that had effects in their text that warning could stop that is a little like a strike, like I said. Like, I used it so versatile. Uh, it was just amazing. Two Apocalypse, I'm mad that they're English. And one uh, Return. I'm happy about it being German, though. Um, so, yeah, these are my going first cards. And, you know, like, I have going second cards. So my deck's really versatile in that sense that it doesn't matter whether I win or lose the dice roll. In fact, a lot of times I have like Alistair Strike and Hand Trap. So it's like if I go first or second, it doesn't matter. I'm doing really, really well. Uh, let's see where things stand at the moment. Oh, looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to show you the side deck first because this is what got me a lot of my wins. Three Raw Spear Mode, I actually never got to resolve it successfully. Um, like... There wasn't a lot of spiral players, and I only played one spiral matchup, and I really didn't need the spear mode, even though I sided and had it in hand. It was just icing on the cake, but I, I just demolished him. He really didn't stand a chance. Um, and it wasn't even like I opened up a hand traps. Like, I literally just masterpiece macabre, and that was it. Like, I had a strike that I never got to use, but raw spear mode's there for those decks that overcommit. Uh, Ties of the Brethren place, Void Feast, believe it or not, is insane. Uh, there's like a lot of decks that, you know, believe it or not, they really do commit a lot. Like, they do. And some decks actually, you know, their basic playstyle is like summoning a lot of monsters, believe it or not. Uh, three Winter Cherries, I play like eight targets for it. This just comes up all the time. The newest edition, which put in a lot of work, was Epsilon. This card was just freaking redundant. Oh my god. Like, Epsilon Mistake, Epsilon Anti Spell. Like, when people try to stand by floodgate you, Epsilon uh, Imperial Order, Skill Drain, um, Epsilon, uh, like I said, Mistake, and um, also uh, Anti Spell for like when I played Paleo and dude like had every freaking freaking floodgate in his main deck. Like he tried to stand by floodgate me. I'm like, Epsilon, bam. Like it even came up like negating his Paleo traps, the Book of Moon, the MST, the Banished. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Book of Moon. It was the. Uh, the, I, I mistake the Book of Moon with Dinomitius. It was Dinomitius and Olanoids on my field spell. Like, I'm like, activate diagram. It's like, all right, chain, target. I'm like, uh, is there a cost for Dinomitius? All right, never mind. Just negate it anyways. And then, like, I'll make one Omega off of Epsilon, clear a card, and then I'd, like, proceed with a play, and then a hand trap comes my way, and I had Gamma in hand. Dude, I double Omega two people, and both times, no, one time it was a scoop. The second time, the dude decided to play it out, and I just OTK'd him anyways. I was like, man, oh man, like, Epsilon is insane. Like, the best way to use it is really on those standby freaking floodgates that shut my deck down. My deck just does horribly against floodgates. Like, mistake was the bane of my existence. I'm like, dude, like, this don't make no sense. Epsilon saved my life, long story short. And, you know, Epsilon reincarnation, stuff like that, time pendulum graph in the, the pendulum magician matchup, it's relevant. So it's just a really, really versatile staple. Uh, three anti spell. I side in anti spells and scoldings when I'm going first against virtually every deck that isn't paleo. And then the, the dark hole. Um, I was playing kaiju's and I really want to find space, but my side deck is always changing. This deck is always changing. Every time you see it, it's not the same. Even if you see a lot of the cards, like the compact, the core engine is always going to be the same because you kind of have to play, you know, masterpiece and invoked for this deck. But um, outside of that, like stuff is changing. You know, I switch around things. Uh, extra deck, True King of all Chlamydia and Syphilis, the diseases that people don't want to catch. Three Makaba, these are the MVPs, Makaba and Omega. I play two um, in playtesting with Epsilon and Gamma. Two came up a lot, like where I'd open up with Gamma and Epsilon. Or even times like in grind game against Paleo, I Epsilon twice. Like I Epsilon, Omega, clear. He set three pass. He had two cards in hand. Like I literally Epsilon, I Epsilon the Olanoids for the field spell, Omega. And then I went in again. And um, I think the other time was, no, that's what it was. It was standby on his, when he standby mistake. I Epsilon him mistake um, and then made Omega in my main phase cleared. And then I played my diagram and he tried to chain Olanoids. And then I Epsilon again and the dude was like, all right, good game. Um, I took two of his face downs and two cards from his hand. He was sitting on one set. He had nothing else left. It was like he was done. Like, oh my god omega was just mvp dude i even used him to put back two of my diagrams 
back into my deck. He shuffles any card. And then tell me why I drew a diagram. I'm like, Omega's a freaking beast, dude. Uh, two Raijin. Raijin is just part of the control aspect. I try to open up with as much forms as disruption as possible. Like, I look at it like this. This is a threat. So if I have, like, Masterpiece, Makaba, Strike, Ash, or Drill, or Ogre, like, every single one of those are threats that my opponent has to play around. And when you're playing around cards like that, you're costing resources from your hand, which means you can't overcommit anything. And if you don't have anything left over after you're done, like, playing through all of that I have, you're just done because I could just attack you for game. Uh, one Kaliga, one Purgatrio, and one Kakaitis. Kaliga came up to make Baguska, and then Purgatrio, I got to Purgatrio those scapegoat idiots. Like, when I would pop scapegoat with Masterpiece, and then dudes like, oh, chain, uh, scapegoat, and then it's like, all right, make Purgatrio, type for game. Then I asked, like, why'd you do that? Dude's like, well, uh, it was the only time I had. Like, if you would have popped it and I let it go through, I wouldn't have been able to make Borload to attack over your Masterpiece. I'm like... Oh, I guess you forgot I have Alistair. And then Kakaitis didn't really make him, but he's so hard to deal with. A lot of decks just auto-lose to him because they can't get over him. And he allows me to just stay established in field presence and keep doing what I need to do. These are all my cherry targets. Told, I did play Paleo. Um, there was a lot of Rogue, believe it or not. Blue Eyes was even there uh, for basically Spiral, Paleo, uh, for ABCs, Omegas for Believe It or Not, Light Swarms, Infernoids, and Pendulum Magicians. Mainly for Pendulum Magicians because their Omegas are like so easy to make and so annoying. Uh, for the Invoked Mirror Match, uh, the Macabas, and then for like almost every deck, and for True King Dinos. Um, there's just like, <laughs> I play so many Cherry Targets, and almost all my Cherry Targets, I actually can make them myself. So they serve a lot of purposes, which is why I don't have to waste space in the side deck for them. That concludes the deck profile. Um, so I went X3. I played like three Pendulum Magicians, one Paleo, one Blue Eyes. I played like um, Trickstar, I played Invoked, I played against one Spiral, and a True King Dino dude who ran like Foolish Burial Goods and uh, Survival's End to like send it, pop a baby and a card, and just go off with this combo. And I forgot what I played round one, because um, matter of fact, he didn't even get a chance to play. I never knew what I was playing, because game one, he scooped on my Masterpiece, and this is round one. Game two, he like sided in. He said a bunch. I thought I was playing Paleo. It wasn't. It wasn't Paleo, but I never knew what I was playing um, because I just too old him and never got to see what his deck can do. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the Terminator report. That concludes the deck profile and the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. I'm definitely really hyped about my deck and I'm happy about its um, basically its progress thus far. And with that end, uh, on that note, I'm just going to go ahead and say God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. Check out some of our older videos. I do appreciate you guys for um, being faithful to my channel. I'm not really like a lot of YouTubers, and I'm not saying I'm better than them. I'm just different, and um, I noticed that, um, and I just hope that it's a good thing and not a bad thing. But you guys are my bread and butter. A YouTuber is nothing without his fans and his subscriber. So trust and believe you guys matter more than anything else, and it's the reason why I do this. And you'll be hearing from me soon. Peace.